Good morning, friends. It is Monday. Oh my gosh. So sorry for the lack of content last week. I had a ridiculous week. It's just one of those hard ones. But we are here now. And um, I just finished heating up some leftover curry for myself. It'd be so yummy. Had a great weekend. Um, just sort of took some time off from work, which was really nice and really needed. After the week I just had, I just needed some time to like reset, refresh. Um, had a great Valentine's Day, which was really fun. And now we are on to a new Monday. I've uh, been working for a couple of hours already and now I need to start getting ready pretty soon because I'm meeting up with Tara today, which will be great. I was so busy last week, I didn't have time to see her, which always sucks when we have to go like a full amount of time without seeing each other. And then we'll see what else the day brings. Should be a nice solid start to our week though. Not too crazy, not too busy, but still like, you know, getting stuff done. Mm. I'm gonna scarf this down, check in with you guys when I'm getting ready. Okie doke, we are getting ready now to um, go and meet up with Tara. And I thought while I get ready here, I would tell you guys my uh, jury duty story. So if you guys recall, um, more than a month ago now, I had jury duty for the first time. And I said that like a lot happened and I wanted to tell you guys all about it, but I wanted to make sure that the trial was over before I did. It was meant to end at the on the last day of January. So now we're more than halfway through February. I feel like it's probably over even if it did have continued delays. So let me tell you guys about my experience. First of all, I get called to go to jury duty on the same day that they are calling juries for the Harvey Weinstein case, which I would have like died to be a part of. Like just being a juror on an iconic case like that would be so cool. But I'd never had jury duty before. I didn't really know what to expect. Go there, um, end up sitting in the waiting room until like 3.30 in the afternoon. And at 4.30, if your name hasn't been called yet, then you just get to leave. So I like really thought that I was in the clear. And then of course, my name gets called right at 3.30, so like the end of the day, which is such a pain. It is what it is. So I get called up with another group. We all go up to our like courtroom number that we're meant to go to. Um, they check us all there and then bring us into the room. And basically it's like the judge is there. We're sitting in sort of like the benches um, in the audience section. And then you have the DA's office sitting over here. And then the guy who was on trial and his lawyer sitting over here. And I really did not know what to expect. So basically the judge just starts going through. He explains the case to us. It was a robbery case. Um, basically this guy had like two counts of burglary against him, but there were no witnesses. Um, so I mean, who knows? I don't know what ends up happening in this trial, obviously, cause I wasn't selected. But he runs to the case. The DA's office introduces themselves. Then, um, the guy was on trial and his lawyer introduced them. And then the judge walks us through and tells us that it's gonna be a like 14 day trial or something crazy, which like, I was definitely confused like for just like burglary. I don't know, like what could, what could we possibly have to talk about for 14 days? <laughs> he asks everyone if they have travel dates that would interfere with um, the court and they raise their hand and then people who like wanted to be dismissed because they couldn't afford to be there raised their hands um, because you only get paid uh, 15, $14 a day or something like that to be on jury. Um, so that's obviously not a lot. So if you don't have savings and you work an hourly job, um, you're pretty much screwed. <laughs> so you can try to prove that, but they don't really approve a lot of people for that apparently. So, and the judge straight up said like, if you're self-employed, that doesn't count as needing to work. So like, I didn't even bother raising my hand for that. Then literally the judge just goes like, okay, we're gonna finish this. We're gonna start calling jury members tomorrow so everyone can go home. So I was like, shit, I have to go back the next day again. I was super annoyed about that. Um, I go home, whatever. The next day I come back and we actually start with the jury selection, which was actually sort of interesting to watch. Now I like genuinely knew that I would, I'm just not, gonna be a good jury member on a case like this. I obviously don't know any details of the case, so this is just my perception of what was happening there. The chances of me convicting this guy and knowing that like because of my like guilty, not guilty, he could go to prison, it could like throw the entire course of his life off. Like I just knew, all right, this is probably not for me. Like that's just really not in my nature <laughs> to do something like that, I don't know. I don't know whose nature it is in, but I, I just felt like it was not gonna be good for me. But I just went up there and like answered everything that they wanted, you know, honestly. So first they call up the first group. So I sort of get to watch it all happen first. There's a set number of questions that you have to answer where there's like a list on the wall. It's like what area of LA you live in, what your occupation is, who you live with, what their occupation is, stuff like that. From there you go 
into like the questions that the judge asks you. So he was asking questions like, um, have you ever been in the back of a police car before? Have you ever had a good or bad experience with the police? Using hypotheticals for different situations that like clearly sort of related to the case. So it became clear to me that there were no witnesses in this case who like physically saw this man do this. And also that one of the people who would be like, who was super involved in the case was definitely a police officer because they asked a lot of questions about police officers and like whether you like them or trust them and things like that. I don't even remember what questions the judge asked me to be completely honest, um, but he didn't talk to me for very long, sort of just like moved on from there. And then once the judge is done asking you questions, then um, the lawyer and the DA's office get to ask you whatever questions they want. So first the guy's lawyer was asking me some questions. He was asking me a little bit about my job because I obviously said that I work in social media and so, Got a lot of questions about that. Um, then he asked me, um, like, do you understand that my client has the right to either testify on behalf of himself or not testify on behalf of himself? And I said, yes. And then he said, okay, and, and would you have any bias towards my client for not testifying for himself? And I said, no. And that was really like the only big question that that guy asked me. From there, the DA's office came up and started asking questions and he had honestly been like really nice, really cool so far from everything I had seen. I do not think he liked me very much. <laughs> I don't know if like, because I said my job was in social media that he thought I was stupid or wanted to make me look stupid, but it did seem like that was his intention and two different times throughout the him questioning me, the judge had to tell him to stop, which <laughs> I think it's pretty freaking crazy. So the first time was he basically gave me a hypothetical that um, the gist of it was like, can you put together things that you see and put together that something happened even if you didn't physically see it? So one of the examples they gave was like, you could see someone jump in a pool or you could be inside, you could hear a splash and come outside and someone is standing there and wet and they're wet and there's ripples in the pool. And you can infer that that person jumped in the pool even though you didn't technically see them do it. The one that he gave me is you've been inside all day, you haven't looked out any windows and you see someone come inside and they're carrying, they're wearing a raincoat and the raincoat is wet. What can you infer? And so I said, well, it was probably raining outside. And he said, okay, why'd you say probably? And I was like, well, they could walk through a sprinkler. They could really like their raincoat and wear it even when it's not raining. And he said like, Okay, and before he gave me this hypothetical, he told me like whatever the legal jargon of this kind of hypothetical is called. I don't know. I still do not remember what it was. But he has me answer that question, and then he goes like, and could you remind me like what what we're talking about here? So I sort of like try to say it in my own words, and he's like, no, and gives me like the first word of the thing, and I try and I still can't, and then the second word of the thing, and I try and I still can't. I don't know the legal jargon for this thing, you know, like I understood the question that I think was enough. And at this point, the judge has to say like, okay, she's not an expert witness. She doesn't need to know the legal jargon of this. You can move on. So he says whatever it was called and then like moves on. So weird. Then he sort of is asking other people other questions. And then um, he asked a question that pertained to the case. I don't want to say specifically what this was in case I really am like not totally sure about how much I'm allowed to share and how much I'm not. But I basically raised my hand for this thing. I told him my answer to it. And um, he said like, okay, is that gonna is that experience going to prevent you from following court orders and being unbiased? And I was like, I didn't wanna say no because I wasn't trying to not follow court orders. Like, you know, but I wanted to be honest that like I felt like the experience that I was talking about could impact how I perceive this case. So I just told him like, you know, it's hard to say 100% yes or 100% no. I don't know all the details of this case. Um, and he's like, well, I need to know like your answer. Is it a yes or a no? And I'm like, well, you know, I can't promise that it won't because your experiences shape your ideas and your opinions of things. And so, you know, I can't 100% say that it won't impact the decision that I make here. And he was like, no, I need a 100% yes or no. Like I really need to drill in on this and, and get a yes or a no. And this is like going back and forth for a little while until finally the judge says like, okay, I think you've drilled in enough. Like, you know, you understand what her answer is. And that's when I was just like, sir, I cannot tell you 100% one way. So my answer is no, I'm not sure that I can follow this court orders. And that's when he said like, okay, I'm finished or whatever. And then basically um, the judge and the lawyer and the DA's office all go up and start talking. I hear the DA right away be like, juror number 15. So like that was my number. I knew like there was no way that he was gonna put me on the jury after like what him and I had gone through. Sounds so dramatic. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, 
they obviously start going through this, the dismissal process and I end up getting dismissed um, pretty quickly. Like as soon as I got moved into the juror box, they got rid of me. Which honestly, like I was pretty relieved about because I really did not know. I, I just didn't know how I was gonna be able to do that. Uh, I just felt really bad for the guy already. I didn't know any of the details, but I was just like, oh, I don't really believe in our incarceration system or that it actually like helps to re rehabilitate people, which is supposed to be the point of it. And so like, I don't know that I feel comfortable being a part of like sending someone to jail. I would be perfectly, perfectly happy being a juror on a um, traffic case <laughs> or something less important um, but this just felt important and like a decision that i was unprepared to make if i'm being completely honest so there you go that was my experience with jury duty it was a complicated day to say the least but i got paid my 14 dollars for being there that day and uh got to go along my way but i do have to say like talking more about like juries and stuff like that it was sort of interesting considering that like we are pretty lucky to live in a society where um, it's not just these like incredibly powerful people who decide people's fates. There's just the normal person like me or like you or like anyone else who gets to weigh in on these things. Imagine how corrupt it is in other countries where um, there's just one judge who makes the decision and they could be totally corrupt by power, whatever it is. Um, we see enough of that here. So it is a cool thing that um, we do get to have juries who make decisions like this um rather than just an all-powerful being i just did not feel like i was well suited for that specific jury okay i have to leave in about 15 minutes so really i'm just gonna get dressed and pack up my stuff and head out we're just going nice and comfy today in my little thrifted sweater which i love and um yeah we are ready to head out called my uber it's on its way let's go oh by the way i don't even think i mentioned this but i'm going first with tara because she's getting her lips done again today and then we're going to a coffee shop to work for a little bit so yeah that's what we are up to she's going <laughs> <It's> happening. <laughs> happening. okay obviously that was a clip of tara getting her lips done and now we've just been hanging out at this coffee shop for a couple of hours really already what the heck at least an hour if not longer um, and I'm just still working on my website. This is, I think, the last page that I need to put together, which is really exciting because that means I can launch it uh, sooner rather than later. Just working on my about. Yes. There it is. <laughs> it has to be done. I'm so sorry. No, I loved it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, just working on my about page, which I feel like is the hardest one to write. Like, I don't know what to say about <laughs> myself. <Yeah. laughs> so, going through that, and um, then we'll see what I decide to do next. I do not have a clear plan for the day, unfortunately, for me. <laughs> Get packages. Okay, here we are. Oh my gosh. This is actually oh, ridiculous what is in here. Oh, guess we're gonna find out. <laughs> Alright, let's see what the heck is inside this giant heavy box. Guys, seriously, it was like a struggle carrying it up for how small it is. It is heavy. Valentine's Day package from Vital Proteins. Collagen water. Their strawberry lemon one, which is really my favorite. It's so good. Yeah, it's a lot of bottles of these in there, so it's pretty heavy. Love that. I'm pretty stocked up on these right now, actually. So I'll probably just put these in my cabinet for now until I'm ready for a restock. But I love that they sent this flavor because it's my favorite one. So good, you guys. If you're looking for a boost of collagen every day, Definitely check this out. I gotta clean out my pantry soon. It's getting sort of full of stuff I don't need or use. Thanks, Vital Proteins, for the little Valentine's Day treat. It is 7:15, and I think it's time for dinner. Um, I'm thinking that I'm gonna make I'm gonna make that ravioli. I just don't really like having this for leftovers, so I sort of want to make it when Con and I are together. It just doesn't like stay as well once it's cooked. Like it just isn't as good. Maybe we'll do. No, I've been really uninspired with my cooking lately, which is why I haven't been doing Monday cravings on my Instagram because I really haven't been making anything new. Just nothing has been like exciting me as of late. I'm gonna use this tilapia and try to do some sort of like lemony veggie medley. Spicy lemon garlic baked tilapia. This sounds up my alley. Let's see what the deal with this is. 
This sounds sort of good. Okay, we're on to something now. Can we talk about this dinner that I just made? It looks so good, you guys. I haven't tried it yet, but I bet it's gonna be absolutely incredible. Didn't film it on the vlog because I filmed it for Monday Cravings, but that should be up on my story still when this video goes up, plus it will be up on my IGTV this week, so. Yeah, head over there if you wanna see how I made this tilapia dish. It's gonna be so good. Okay, I just tried this and I had to come back to let you guys know how freaking delicious it is. Oh my gosh. I am so excited that I have more tilapia in the fridge because I seriously wanna make this again. Genuinely, so, so good. All right, me and this little smoosh are gonna go to bed now. Ready? You gonna come cuddle with me or you wanna stay down here? She wants to lay down here. It's been her favorite little spot the past couple days. I guess I will chat with you guys in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.